G'day guys, welcome back to the Devon Too Good Investing Channel. In this video today, we're going to be doing a sum of the parts valuation of Meta Platform stock to see what one might reasonably pay for it to get an adequate return. So guys, you might might have already realized my voice is pretty much gone. Uh, I haven't been feeling too well over the last few days, but hey, we stay on this grind and I've got to keep pumping out content. So it is what it is but I think you'll find value in this video regardless. But let's get straight into it. So for this valuation, essentially what I've done is I've split Facebook's or Meta Platform's business into five different categories. So the first category being net cash, the second category being WhatsApp, the third category being Messenger, the fourth category being Reality Labs, and then the fifth category combines both Instagram and Facebook. So I've gone ahead and I've valued each part of their business on a per share value one by one. So if we start with net cash, I think, well, Facebook definitely has a net cash of $17.15 per share. So the way I did this was I took, went onto their balance sheet and I got their cash and their short term investments and minus their debt and they had no debt. So essentially, the net cash per share is just the net cash divided by the shares outstanding, which I got from the income statement. And that's how I got that $17.15 per share. And then the second part of the business that I valued was WhatsApp, and that came in at $29.20 per share. And the way I got that was, so this one was a little bit trickier because WhatsApp currently is not monetized so it actually doesn't make any money at the moment but what we do know was back in february of 2014 facebook purchased whatsapp for 19 billion dollars and back when they made the purchase whatsapp had 465 million users and today in 2022 they got 2 billion users which is just crazy so what i did was i got the 2 billion users and I divided it by the 465 million users to get a ratio. And that actually gave me a ratio of 4.3. So essentially, since 2014, WhatsApp has increased its users by 4.3 times. So I was pretty much able to times this 19 billion by 4.3. And then divide it by the shares outstanding. And that's how I got the value per share of $29.20. And if you look at it at a like holistic kind of value, it would be worth about $80 billion. Some might argue that's too high, but for the sake of this valuation, I'm going to leave it as it is. And then based off that, I was able to work out how much Facebook Messenger is worth. So in 2022, Facebook Messenger had 988 million users. So what I did was I got this 988 million users and then I divided it by WhatsApp's uh, 2 billion users and they gave me a ratio, which then I times by WhatsApp's value. So pretty much... I valued it the same way as WhatsApp and I just took the ratio of how many users Messenger had compared to WhatsApp and then I times it by WhatsApp's value and that gave me a share per share value of $14.42. And then for Reality Labs, that's the Oculus brand and that's what Facebook are trying to do with the metaverse. I valued this at zero because I simply can't predict how much money or how much these businesses are worth. Just because I have no idea how the metaverse is going to play out. And it's too speculative. So I think to be conservative. I'm going to leave this at zero. Although to be fair it is probably worth something. But honestly I can't put a number on it. So then we jump down to Instagram and Facebook. And the reason why I valued this as the same. Is that on Facebook's uh, income statement, they keep their family of apps as one and we know that WhatsApp and Messenger do not make any money. So all the operating income from their family of apps comes from Facebook and Instagram 
and that ga- gave us just under $57 billion. So I took this $57 billion and I times it out by 15 as I think this is a fair multiple for uh, Facebook and Instagram. You could argue that Instagram's multiple could be 20 or 25, whereas Facebook's multiple could be anywhere between 10 and 15. So I do think 15 is fair. And then I've uh, divided it by the shares outstanding. And it gives us a per share value of $305.18 per share. So if we sum this all up, this gives us a uh, per share value of Facebook of $365.94. So if you believe that Facebook can grow 8% per year, for the next five years. So if we grow this $365 per share value by 8% over the next five years, in 2026, this should give us a uh, share price of $537.69. And if we take into account today's share price of $188.07, this gives us a CAGA over the next five years of 23% per year. So you might say, hey, maybe, you know, I don't fully agree with your assumptions here, Devin. You, you're a bit off. Well, okay, well, let's make these a bit more conservative. Let's say instead of WhatsApp being worth $29 per share, let's halve that and let's make it 15 So then that also halved Messenger right there. So that went from 14 to 7 You're like, okay. Well, look, we're still at a 22% per year return. Let's say, oh yeah, like I, I don't think the multiple is going to be 15. Let's just make it 12. You know, you're still sitting at 17% per year. But then on the other hand, you know, Facebook are going to be buying back shares. Like there's no doubt about it. Facebook are going to be buying back shares. So let's say they retire some shares. This share number here down to... Yo, this share number here and reduce that share count. Well, shit, like, you know, we're, we're at a CAGR of 20%. Now, let's just say, you know, you're a bit more bullish and you think these numbers are accurate and then they re- decrease their share count again. Look, you're then looking at 26% per year return. But then you could be like, hey, you know, maybe I don't want to buy it at $188. Maybe, maybe I want to you know, roll the dice and see if it falls to 175. Well, that increases your return to 25%. And if we add in, the, you know, the share repurchases that they might do over the next five years, well, hey, that boosts it up back to 28%. So, guys, honestly, it's best to be conservative with these sorts of valuations. Further the share price falls, the higher your return will be over time. You know, I don't agree that, you know, let's say Reality Labs, it might be worth something in five years or maybe it might not turn out and it's a drag on their business. What if it costs them, you know, negative 50 per share? Well, if it fails and costs them $50 per share in negative value, well, hey, based on these assumptions, you know, you're still getting a 20% per year CAGA. So there's plenty, plenty to think about here, guys. I'm not trying to, you know, place an exact value on this because as you can see there's plenty of moving parts and you've got to make your own assumptions based on what you think is realistic but as it does stand no matter how you kind of put it you know it does seem like you could get an adequate return if these assumptions pay out but guys that's it for this video thanks for watching thanks for putting up my voice and i'll see you in the next one